Tigray is Ethiopia's northernmost state and is also the heart of the country's glorious past, once home to a great civilization spanning more than 1,000 years from the 8th century BC to the 8th century AD. As evidenced by its unique pre-Christian obelisks, countless stone inscriptions, dozens of rock-hewn churches, monasteries, underground palaces and imperial tombs that have all withstood the test of time, Tigray was once the country's architectural workshop. Tigray's historical, religious and cultural wealth is as overwhelmingly rich as it is diverse. In addition to the Tigrinya-speaking Ethiopians, Tigray is also home to two minority Ethiopian nationalities, namely the Irob and the Konama, who live in the northeastern and northwestern parts of the region respectively. Tigray shares borders with the Afar region to the east, Eritrea to the north, Sudan to the west, and the Amhara regional state to the south. From end to end, Tigray is steeped in history that goes as far back as some 3,000 years. One of Tigray's unique edifices of great historical, archaeological and architectural significance is the Temple of Yeha. Some 60 kilometers east of Aksum, the Temple at Yeha is thought to have been built in the 8th century BC. Standing for more than two and a half millennia, it is the oldest building in sub-Saharan Africa. It's a magnificent structure, remarkable for, among other things, its structural strength, geometrical perfection and architectural beauty. Yeha was a center of the Da'amat kingdom that existed before Aksum. Many centuries older than Aksum, uh, Aksum uh, civilization, according to my opinion, starts in the first century after Christ, and this is many centuries earlier, uh, and it is also very important uh, in comparison to the Yemenite uh, situation in pre-Christian times. So we have the parallels, of course. But not only parallels, they are also Ethiopian uh, native uh, sources. Aksum was the heart from which the pulse of this great civilization throbbed. Its ruined palaces, tombs, majestic monuments and inscriptions are attestations of its past glory. At one time it extended across the Red Sea to Yemen and was reckoned by the third century Persian historian Mani to be one of the four great powers of the ancient world, alongside Persia, China and Rome. Uh, what's impressed me the most? Um, I think it is, again, when you're looking at the buildings there, the tombs, how all the granite blocks are so perfectly aligned, incredibly uh, uh, flat and angulated, perfect angles, 90 degree angles. And again, think how they had to do that, with which, what type of implements. They didn't have um, modern day uh, machinery to do the carving. This was all done by hand, presumably with hanna, uh, hammers and chisels. Uh, and to get it, so, and then they would have to sand down. Um, and incredible, absolutely incredible uh, the complexity of how the civilizations have evolved within uh, Ethiopia dating back all those thousands of years uh, to the Jews with the Christians and latterly of course with with the Muslims as well and how they've all blended in together is quite incredible Aksum is a city whose numerous mysteries remain largely undeciphered one of its best secrets is the presence of the lost ark of the original covenant of God, which is believed to contain the stone tablets on which God inscribed the Ten Commandments. The ark was brought from Jerusalem to Aksum after the visit to the holy city 
by Menelik I, the son of King Solomon and Queen Sheba. Ever since then, this holy object has been safely kept here within the compound of Mariam Zion Church. The well laid out Axum Archaeological Museum inside the northern Stelai field contains an interesting variety of objects found in the tombs, ranging from ordinary household objects such as lamps and incense burners to quite sophisticated glassware, beautiful lion gargoyles, a charming pot shaped like a three legged bird, well preserved Sabaean and Giz inscriptions dating back over 2,500 years an amphora from Turkey or Cyprus that provides evidence of ancient trading routes and a particularly nice collection of Axumite coins. The Axumite kingdom was famous for its economic prosperity, architectural ingenuity and cultural vibrancy. Arguably, the obelisks in the ancient city of Axum are the best known legacies of this great civilization. Beneath these obelisks are found royal tombs and what is certain is that these obelisks have no comparison anywhere in the world, being the largest single pieces of stone ever erected. I think it's uh, very nice. The excavation site and the steles are very beautiful and impressive, I would say, because they are so old and you can really see it's just one piece, which is amazing. In Egypt, many of the pyramids are made from stone blocks and we can see the steles, which are, I think, unique, maybe. And this is very special for tourists from Europe because we don't have such old pieces. The way they are built and the art on it. So they put the grave doors onto them and this is yeah this is very impressive as well but I, I would say the most impressive thing is that they managed to get them here from the uh, stone uh, manufacturing place how they pulled it for example it's amazing the largest and heaviest of all is the fallen obelisk decorated on all of its four sides this 13-story obelisk is 33 meters high and 4 meters wide. Its estimated weight exceeds 500 tons. With 11 stories, the second largest obelisk is 26 meters high. It is decorated on all four sides too. Looted by fascist Italy in 1937, it was taken to Rome in three pieces. It took seven decades before Italy finally gave in to the intense diplomatic and popular pressure from Ethiopia and friends of Ethiopia to return the stolen obelisk to its rightful owners. This is the third largest and still standing obelisk. This 10 story obelisk has remained in the same place and position ever since its erection. These unique and magnificent obelisks symbolize Axum's technological superiority. Even today, it is still not understood how these massive monolithic edifices were quarried, transported more than four kilometers and erected. Axum is Ethiopia's Christian capital. Built in the 4th century AD in Axum, the original church of St. Mary of Zion, or Mariam Zion, was the first church in sub-Saharan Africa and perhaps one of the earliest churches in the world. The city of Axum serves as a base for visiting a number of historical and religious sites, including those in and around Yeha and Adwa. Of course, uh, Aksum is very important because it's the cradle of Christianity, so it has uh, an historical importance, I think. For that reason, it's very, I mean, it's important to start from here, I think. And then you can go to the other place in the north of Ethiopia to visit the other place where you can see the symbol of Christianity. I feel like I've really come to the beginning of civilization. 
And what's so fascinating is the complexity of the history, the vibrancy, and then to see the stones that date back so long is really meaningful. It makes it a very impressive sight mm. and will stay in our memory because we feel we've been back in time and, and, and understood a bit more about the culture and the religion. Yeah. Very close to Yaha, the site of the Battle of Iadwa can easily be visited on foot. It was here in 1896, against the dramatic backdrop of the mountains that make up the teeth of Adwa, that the fate of this great nation was decided. Here the ill-equipped and ill-trained Ethiopian militias, drawn from all over the country, delivered a stunning rebuff to the colonial ambitions of Italy and triumphed over an invading modern Western army. Today, Adwa remains a symbol of resistance that preserved the independence of this ancient country. A milestone in African history, the victory of Adwa also inspired black peoples around the world and all those then suffering under the yoke of colonialism to stand up and fight for their freedom. Dedicated to one of the nine saints, the church of Abba Gorima has both religious and historical significance. The illustrated 6th century gospel, the only one of its kind, is one of the notable treasures of the church. Less than five kilometers southeast of the site of the Battle of Adwa, the church has gained additional significance for being the burial place of Ra Salula Abu Nega, the famous Ethiopian military commander who defeated the invading Italian army. Tembien is located in south-central Tigray. With its range of mountains, deep gorges and flowing river, Tembien provides many examples of the striking natural beauty for which Tigray is rightly proud. It also houses the region's only hydropower dam on the Tekeza River, one of the tributaries of the Nile and the man-made lake upstream. The Makele Abi Adi Adwa Road takes the traveller through a very scenic terrain. One could take a short detour from the road to visit some of the rock-hewn churches in the area. Abu Yohani is perhaps the most famous rock-hewn church of the area. This rock-hewn church is believed to have been built in the 14th century. Climbing halfway to the 150 meter high sharp rocky cliff, the monastery has a man-made tunnel the only entrance to the church. The church has 14 columns, of which seven are freestanding, with spectacular cruciform. Cross carvings and other decorations embellish the domes, cupolas, and arches of the church. Gabriel Wuken is one of the notable ancient churches in Tembien, 16 kilometers from Abiadi on the road to Adwa. Built in the 15th century by Saint Abuna Daniel, it has features of modern architectural styles. The church houses a variety of relics, such as a gold cross, golden threaded cloth, a gold-plated cross donated by Emperor Johannes IV, and antique curtains. In eastern Tigray, the Desa'a forest, a lush green forest near Atsbi, is a reminder of the fact that most of the highlands of the region were once covered with dense forests. During the off-farm season, it's exciting to see long caravans of camels, mules and donkeys traveling to the famous salt route to the Afar Depression. Mikhailemba is one of the churches in the Atsbi area. With an interior area of 140 square meters, the church is perhaps the most spacious of all the rock-hewn churches in Tigray. In terms of decoration and finishing, the church is second to none. Just half an hour's drive from Mukro town, Abra is located in one of the most scenic sites of the region. 
Considered among the country's earliest churches, Abra Atspa is known for its extraordinary interior decoration, as well as its magnificent murals. Its ceiling is decorated with sophisticated patterns and its walls are dotted with carved crosses. Without doubt, Abra Atspa as a rock church is an architectural masterpiece. Architecturally, it's said to be Tigray's finest. According to local tradition, the church was constructed in the 4th century, but some scholars estimate the date of construction to be the 10th century. What is certain is that it was built well before the famous rock churches of Lalabella, where the level of sophistication of rock-hewn architecture reached its peak. I, I feel all the weight and the, the, the marvel of the, uh, such an ancient historical sites. So it's, uh, I'm very impressed because we also in Italy have very ancient churches, but so old, uh, really very few. And so it's, uh, I'm very glad to, to, to can visit uh, um, a church uh, coming from the 4th century uh, uh, after, uh, after Jesus Christ. Located on the southwest outskirt of the town of Wukro, Adi Akawe is a recently discovered archaeological site. The discovery of the site has triggered much excitement and interest among archaeologists. German and Ethiopian archaeologists have discovered a number of objects, including a statue of a seated woman, an altar with a Sabean inscription and a partially inscribed podium. To the surprise of archaeologists, the inscription mentions the pre-Axumite Daamat kingdom and the Temple of Yeha. From the evidence assembled, the site is tentatively dated back to the 6th or 7th century BC. The Wukro Archaeological Museum is up and running in the town of Wukro, 42 kilometers from the regional capital, to preserve these and numerous other heritages excavated from the sites of Wakarida and Mariam Hanza. One of the least known histories in Ethiopia is the contribution Tigray made to the protection of Islam in the early stages of its development. The early followers of the Prophet Muhammad facing persecution in Mecca from the Quraysh in 615 sought and were granted asylum by the king of that part of Ethiopia whom the Arabs called Negash al-Habashat. The first group was joined later by another hundred refugees, including the Prophet's daughter Rukuya, his future wives Umar Habiba and Umar Salama, and his cousin Jafar Abu Talib. When asked by the rulers of Mecca to return the exiles, the Ethiopian king refused, even if offered a mountain of gold. The generosity and principal behavior of the king impressed the Prophet Muhammad to such an extent that he exempted Ethiopia from jihad or holy war. The remains of King Nagash and those of the exiles who chose to remain in Ethiopia are buried in the compound of the mosque at Nagash, 11 kilometers north of Wukro. Located to the north of Wukro, Medhani Alam Adik Esho is one of the rock churches at Zada Amba. Like most rock churches of Tigray, its exterior lacks the decoration, style and finishing touches of its interior, where symmetrical patterns, crosses and bas-relief beautify its walls, ceilings and pillars. Tigray is home to more than 120 rock-hewn churches. These churches are scattered all over Tigray, from Geralta to Tembien, from Aspi to Hausian. The majority of the churches, however, are concentrated in Gera Alta, a mountainous region known for its matchless natural beauty and breathtaking scenery, a combination of mountain ranges, expansive flatland and deep valleys.
Um, the churches were really nice, like it's impressing, like they started building those churches in the rocks in the 4th century and like some we saw were from the 6th century, so really really old and yeah, they are still like high up in the mountains, it's impressive and it's even now hard or not not exactly easy to go there, it's a challenge, so it's really nice to climb up the rocks and in the end you discover a church, it's amazing. And you also are awarded with a great view of all the landscape, it's really nice. Well, it's old churches and very nice paintings inside, but the most beautiful actually is the landscape, I think, and the way to get to the church. The walking there, the climbing in the rocks, the view you get as a reward for all the climbing. Actually, that's what I like most. Among the most famous churches of the Garaalta cluster are Debrets Ion Abuna Abraham and Abuna Yamata Guh. These two churches have several common characteristics, especially the long-kept and well-preserved murals showing biblical figures. Debrets Ion is thought to date from the 4th century and features the tallest rock pillars of all the churches in the area and is known for its fascinating wall paintings. Debrecen is one of the largest rock-hewn churches in the Garaalta cluster, but what fascinates most visitors is its wall paintings and the ceremonial panel on which the figures of saints are painted. In terms of its location, perhaps Guh is the most difficult to access. Carved out of a perpendicular cliff, the church can only be accessed by using the natural hand grips and footholds. The magnificent paintings on the walls and the ceilings of the church, depicting the apostles, have not lost their luster. Uh, the church is really marvelous, fantastic. I've never seen things like this. And I don't understand how they make a church in this uh, height and in this mountain. Uh, there are very nice paintings, uh, Christian paintings, so I like it very much. It's uh, amazing for me. The mountains of Irob mark the eastern escarpment of the Ethiopian highlands. These imposing mountains range in elevation from about 150 meters to 3,250 meters above sea level. One of the captivating landmarks in Irob district is the monastery of Gunda Gundo. Located in the bottom of a valley, between a sheer sided cliff in the west and an escarpment that drops towards the Afar depression in the east, it houses Mariam Gunda Gundo Debra Gerizan, the church dedicated to St. Mary. The monastery also served as the refuge for Dagika Estefanos, followers of an Ethiopian saint whose movement was persecuted in the 15th century. Built in the 6th century by King Gabramesco, Debre Damo is the country's most famous monastery. Best known for its Christian scholarship, remote location, and its rich collection of ecclesiastical treasures, the site of Debre Damo stands out as a site of totally genuine, authentic monastic life. Isolated from the world and surrounded by sheer cliffs, the monastery is situated on a very high plateau. The church can only be accessed by this 15-meter plaited rope, which is hanging down from the top of the cliff. About 300 monks and students live here in these stone and mud dwellings, or hidmos, a common style of construction in rural Tigray. At the western end of the region is Kafta Shararo National Park in the districts of Kafta Homero and Tahti Adiabo. Rich with varieties of flora and fauna, it has 167 mammal, 95 bird and 9 reptile species. Notable among these are about 100 heads of transboundary African elephant, which the park shares with Eritrea's Gash Setit. Located at the edge of the canyon of the Dekezia River, 42 kilometers southwest of Shirei town, along the Shirei Gonda Road, 
The monastery of Debra Abai dates from the 14th century. The monastery is a center of excellence for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church liturgy, or Kedase, and attracts students from all over the country. Debra Abai Monastery also has an abundance of heritages, such as gold crosses, a gold chalice, a golden embossed gospel, and assorted antique crowns and books donated by various Ethiopian emperors. Ayesus Hinta in southern Tigray is one of the tourist attractions of historic and religious significance. This monolithic rock-hewn church is found after a 30-minute trek to the left of Gidjet village, 61 kilometers from Makele. It has two short doors and five windows, mimicking Axumite architectural style. The interior has an attractive architectural design. It is believed to have been built by Abuna Abraham at the end of the 14th or beginning of the 15th centuries. Raya and Azabo is known for its spectacular chains of mountains overlooking fertile lowlands. These natural features have witnessed many landmark episodes in the making of the nation's history. Maicho, the main town of the area, was one of the centers of resistance to the Italian invaders. As has always been the case, many Ethiopians paid the ultimate price to preserve the independence of this ancient nation. At every twist and turn of these roads lie the bones of Ethiopia's freedom fighters who died to keep the torch of freedom burning. With an elevation of 10,000 feet or 4,000 meters above sea level, Sebet is Tigray's highest point. Ideal for climbing, trekking, bird watching and sightseeing, Raya and Azabo is a beautiful place of unparalleled landscapes. Lake Hashenge, located 45 kilometers from Korem, is Tigray's only lake. It is encircled by these amazing mountains, rising up to more than 2,000 meters. Hashenge and its environs are nesting and transit sites for many endemic and migratory birds and are therefore attractive destinations for both researchers and bird watchers. On the western shore of Lake Hashenge is the archaeological site of Mifsas Bahri, where recent excavations have brought to light the rich heritages of the area. The site contains a ruin of a substantial building constructed of bright red dressed ashlar or dressed stone, which may date back to as early as the late phases of the Axumite period, which has led many to believe that it might have been the southernmost Axumite site. 145 kilometers on the southerly route from the regional capital is found the dense forest of Hogumbrida. Extending over 22,000 hectares of land, the Hogumbrida forest is home to various wild animals including leopards and is a nesting place for unique lakeside migratory birds. Gratkasu mountain, with its meandering road and the Holaring waterfall, affords stunning views. Known for their romantic and generous lifestyle, the people of Raya and Azabo are proud of their rich cultural heritage, notably their heartwarming music. Makele is the oldest of all the capitals of Ethiopia's present-day regional states. Local scholars trace Makele's founding to the 13th century. It was the country's capital during the reign of Emperor Johannes IV in the 19th century and his palace still dominates the city today. Grand in size, majestic in its architectural design, the palace is the city's main attraction. It also serves as the city's ethnographic museum where one can see among other things the Emperor's throne royal beads, items of clothing and rifles. One could also visit the Hawelti Summer Etat or Martyr's Monument on the western side of the city, 
a war memorial, the Hawelti commemorates a 17-year struggle waged by the people of Tigray against the dictatorial military junta, or the Derg, that ruled the country with an iron fist. Dubbed as the Northern Star, Makale is not only Northern Ethiopia's political, administrative, cultural and business capital, it is also one of the country's most beautiful cities. It is accessible by road and air from Addis Ababa. Its international airport has all the facilities and amenities to accommodate the latest modern aircraft. Tigray is also rich in intangible cultural heritages, including the popular outdoor festivals of Ashenda, Meskel and Epiphany or Timkat. The traditional festival of Ashenda is a week-long carnival-like festival for girls towards the clothing of the Ethiopian calendar year, celebrated in many parts of Tigray. In Aksum, it is known by another name, Ainuwarhi. The festival, which symbolizes female beauty and emancipation, is celebrated with music and colorful dance performances. Efforts are now underway to inscribe Ashenda in UNESCO's list of intangible world heritages. This is followed by UNESCO-inscribed MESCO, a national festival celebrating the finding of the true cross by the Byzantine Empress Eleni. MESCO, symbolized by the burning of a big bonfire and accompanied by Hoya Hoye, a youth festival, has great cultural significance and is a major tourist attraction. To glorify the centrality of the cross in the celebrations, a 52 meter high and 29 meter wide giant metal cross was erected recently at the historical place of Choma Hilltop in Tigray's capital Magale. The cross is the highest in Africa and one of the tallest in the world. Another significant cross, which is 22 meters high and 12 meters wide, was also erected previously in Adigrat, at Gandero Hill. For nearly two millennia every year, the people of this region celebrated the festival of Epiphany of Tinket, which falls on January 19. This colorful festival is held in commemoration of Jesus Christ's baptism in the River Jordan. These landmark sites are new inclusions to the treasure trove of Tigray's rich heritage. In short, there are a million reasons to visit Tigray. Complementing all of these is its reliable security, its relatively developed infrastructure and hotel facilities, and the unreserved hospitality of its people. We have come here for the history of your country and to see the people of your country because it has been interesting for us coming from the United Kingdom the completely different philosophy and culture where everybody here is kind and thoughtful and hard-working people and you manage to be friendly and cheerful very important the history is interesting the architecture is interesting the rock churches are fascinating. There are so many different sites and places in your country for people to come from England and other countries. We have visited many countries in the world, but Ethiopia has been one of the most interesting. <laughs>